I pay $14.95 a month for an Audible subscription. Every month you get a book credit, and with that credit you can purchase a book. According to Audible, you own these books, and they're yours to keep forever. And they even say that you can cancel your membership and still have access to the books you purchased on any device. However, in the wording of this statement, they make sure to use the words cancel and membership, not close an account, like they do on this page about deleting your Audible account. An Audible membership is not the same thing as an Audible account. According to this page, you will permanently lose access to any Audible titles you purchased if you delete your account. This means you will always need an Audible account to listen to your audiobooks. If you log into your account on a browser, you'll notice that they provide an option to download books to your local device. Problem solved, right? Just spend 16 hours downloading your entire library while never being able to close the window, and you'll finally own your library. But it turns out these files are not MP3 files, but AAX files. An AAX file is an Audible Enhanced Audiobook file. Audible enhances these files by adding DRM, which makes it impossible to listen to them without using a proprietary client like Apple Books, which will require you to sign into your Audible account to listen to them. This means you can't listen to your audiobooks on an MP3 player or any client that doesn't first ping Audible servers to make sure that you own the book before listening to it. I don't know about you, but if I buy a book from Barnes & Noble and I had to call the manager to read my book every time I went to a different coffee shop, I wouldn't say I own that book. Fortunately, there's a way to liberate these audiobooks into MP3 files, but it takes some effort. But before I get into that, let me say that if you spent any time researching on how to do this, you might have run into this tool called Open Audible, which despite its name, will try to charge you $20 to convert your files on your machine. I don't know how this is legal or why anyone would pay money to use a product that they already own, but I guess enough people have had difficulty converting the books into MP3s that this is one of the first results that pops up when searching Audible files to MP3. I even found a tutorial on how to crack open Audible by changing the time settings on your machine, but it seems that they've already patched it. Normally, converting files into another codec can be done with this tool called FFmpeg. For example, if I have a WebM file and I want to convert it to an MP4, I could simply run this command and it would probably do it faster than Adobe Media Encoder. But if we run the same command on our Audible file, it fails. If we look at FFmpeg's documentation, they have a section that seems to allow you to convert Audible files, but you need to use this dash activation bytes flag with an eight character string as its argument. These activation bytes are a unique string associated with your Audible account that allows FFmpeg to decode the audio files. This is similar to an authentication token for an API, but Audible doesn't have a public API, and they don't seem to provide a way for you to get your activation bytes from anywhere in your account settings. So we need to use this tool called Audible CLI which interacts with Audible's non-public API to grab your activation bytes and will even let you download everything from your library, which comes in handy if you have a massive library like I do, as manually saving from the browser takes forever. I'm pretty sure Audible intentionally throttles downloads from the browser to discourage people from trying to convert their library because on mobile, it takes a fraction of the time, probably because they know it's a lot harder to access local storage on iOS without really jumping through some hoops. To install it, run pip install audible CLI, then run audible quick start, which will guide you through the process of registering your CLI as an audible device. This will require you to enter your username and password and possibly fill out a couple captchas or click one of those spyware Amazon 2FA links. But don't worry, open source projects are rigorously audited and have never had their developers push malicious code to a public repository. Once you've done all this, you should see a message saying something like successfully registered your name's Audible for iPhone. After skimming some of the code from this package, what I'm assuming is happening on the back end is that it spoofs a mobile browser to log into your account and then scrapes authentication data from that session. Then using this authentication data, it somehow registers a new device under your account pretending to be an iPhone, which will allow it to make requests for downloads and activation bytes, all of which I'm sure is fine under Amazon's terms of use. Anyway, once we've gained perfectly lawful access to Audible's API, we run Audible Activation Bytes, and it will spit out our eight character activation byte string, which you should save for later. After that, to save our entire library, we run the following command. This AAX fallback flag is necessary because Audible recently upgraded their enhanced audiobook format by adding a layer of encryption. These enhanced enhanced files will have a .aaxc extension and can't be decoded with the activation bytes alone. 
I'll spare you the details, but the AAX fallback flag will try and download only AAX files before downloading the AAXC files. And when it has to download the AAXC files, it will pair them with another .voucher file, which will be needed to decode them. After our library is downloaded and we have FFmpeg installed, we technically have everything we need to decode our library. But because FFmpeg is notoriously hard to use, I suggest using this AAX to MP3 script to do so. Grab the script from this repo and run it with these flags and arguments. For auth code, we use our activation bytes. For E, we specify the output codec. For level, we specify the level of compression we want to apply to the output files. I found no difference in audio quality by using 4. If you want your book to be split up into chapters, use the chaptered flag and we use the wildcard.aax to specify this process be done to all of our audible files in the current directory. After some time, you should have a directory named audiobook, sorted by author, book, and chapter. If you have any .aaxc files, the process is exactly the same, except you change the wildcard to be .aaxc. It may fail and tell you you're missing a chapters.json or cover.json file. If that happens, find the ASIN of the audiobook with the following command, and then run audible download with the chapter and cover flags, then run the script again. You can now listen to your audiobooks on any device you want, as God intended. All of the commands I ran in this video are available in a blog post I linked in the description. Thanks for watching.